Fitzroy Football Club was born in 1884 at the local town hall. A founding member of the VFL, the Maroons won back-to-back -back flags in the new competition's second and third years and collected six more premierships, the last in 1944. The club, which became known as the Lions in 1957, also produced six Brownlow medalists, from the great Hayden Bunton in 1931 to Bernie Quinlan in 1981. Fitzroy had a proud and rich tradition. However, 1986 was the last chapter with a happy ending. Through the eyes of Bernie Quinlan, one of the club's all-time greats, this is a round-by-round -round look back at a year when Victoria Park was home and winning was the only way. David Parkin took the top job from Robert Walls. And although the Roy boys won just seven games in 85, there was a great air of expectation around the club. We certainly seemed to be uh, tailing off our performances in 1985, so the expectations, I suppose, when we still had a lot of good players at the club, were that with a new coach, there'd be a uh, fresh injection of, uh, I suppose, endeavour and fervour and so forth, and that we'd take off again in 1986. He may have been closing in on 35 years of age, but Quinlan was as keen as ever. Yeah, I was only a youngster then, wasn't I, Mark? I was always going to play, yeah. There was no, no uh, problems with, uh, or any thoughts of, of my retirement at that stage. To the on-field action, and round one brought a trip down the Princess Highway to Cadinia Park. From line across to Tilly, who puts it forward, looking for Quinlan. Up high, Pert was there as well. MacIver takes it, a snap towards goal. Bounces the right way, it's first goal for Fitzroy. One goal, one, seven points, Geelong yet to score. Comes back, Mitchell takes it away. Gets the hand pass to Christensen. Well tackled, picked up now by Cooper. Cooper's kick up towards half forward. Osborne up high, couldn't take the mark. Well picked up by Lyon, across to Turner. Turner looking for Quinlan, it's Quinlan and Cleve. Quinlan taps the ball on, excellent play as Harris comes in, kicks off the ground by Osborne, Quinlan's there, into the open goal and his second goal on the board. Excellent team play by Fitzroy. He's not doing anything at all, but I think it's caught around the flat, around the pole, so that might not be a guy. McIver, the hand pass to Turner. Turner almost threw it on to Harris, chance of a score coming up, but Harris goes for the short pass instead. Lyon takes it, runs into the open goal, and there's the fourth one for Fitzroy. Thornton's kick back into play. And Fitzroy out of trouble once again. Through Reeves, up towards centre wing. Oh, Osborne's got the chance at the back. He can bounce his way across the half forward line with two, draw the player and shoot towards goal. Low trajectory kick, looks pretty good, and he's goal. 35 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. No clear tap, comes back to Flanagan. The hand pass not taken by Bues. Barwick short kick picked up by McIver, snapped towards goal from McIver's full points. Excellent pay by the ex-Banana Lander. Flanagan dominating the ruck work, but it's taken by Pert. A lovely kick from Gary Pert towards centre half forward. Quinlan from behind, it's a great mark to Bernie Quinlan. Jackson up, it's punched away, Linder takes it. In the back could have been the decision, but it's called play on. Reeves picks the ball up, hand passes to Ruse, out to McIver. McIver has time to steady with the bounce, then drives it forward with Barwick's on his own, gets a favourable bounce, then has time, have the bounce, puts it forward to Quinlan, it's punched away, picked up by Harris, sure. thought about the hand pass, easily oh. runs around his opponent and dribbles it through for full points. Barwick across to McIver, still with that player, now he goes over the top to Ross Thornton in the centre. Good shepherding, sees Thornton clear. Spears one up towards Osborne at half forward. Up a fraction early. Here's Harris at the back with explosive pace. He's got Quinlan in the square. Turner just need only push it towards him, but no, he's going to have a shot himself. And I think he's kicked it. From the half-back flank, Turner towards the wing. Darcy taps it on. Knocked on likewise by Hinchin. Osborne got the hand pass in. Pert coming through for Fitzroy. Has time to steady. Goes for the short pass. A well placed kick straight onto the chest of Bernie Quinlan. A shocking kick. Turner takes it. The hand pass towards Gale. He leaves it for Bernie Harris. A left foot kick towards goal by Bernie Harris, and there's no mistake there. McDowell's out there.
there, Ben. He must be down the back pocket. He's in the pocket for sure, yep. Doing battle with Purser. As I said, got that very big bandage on his knee. Quinlan tries to spin out against his old club. Oh, what a great goal from Superboot. He's put up the first score of the match. Not much method in Footscray's attack down there at all. They're just booting at any, uh, anywhere they want to put, any, at any time. Yes, a bit like uh, oh, a good tackle on Baxter by Barwick, holding the ball with the decision. The advantage will play. Thornton takes advantage of it. Thornton straight down the ground, and that's the best way to go today. A mark and or free kick, whatever you like. And it will be taken by Harris. That's Bernie Harris. He decides to, or has to play on now. He's got the hand pass out. It's picked up by McIver at the point of the square. McIver looking for Quinlan, but a mark! Oh, 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 so where did he get the extra pace from at that age? I don't know. Oh, the old bloke does it well. Beautiful play on the <laughs> part of the old super, but a magnificent bit of pace, Peter. Look at him go. He's starring today. He's a, had, a, had a hand in there. Three goals. He kicked one himself. And Bernie Quinlan can make it two from the forward pocket. He's about 30 metres out. Guides that one through, I think. It looks pretty good from here. Two goals to Quinlan. Knocked down to McIver. Picked up by Thornton. Thornton trying to find Quinlan. Kennedy doing it well. Here's a chance for Conlon. He's got great speed. Good shepherd, Quinlan. Conlon shoots a goal and has put it through for a goal. Their first one since the 19 and a half minute mark of the first quarter. And it came up at the 24 and a half minute mark of the third term. Ford got one hand with McIver. Just about Fitzroy's best player as it comes out now to Brown. He drops it short. It'll be a mark to Conlon. A quick hand pass to Bernie Harris. Over it goes to Quinlan. And he'll put that through. So it's brought him back into the game. That's their first goal. That end for the match. A point the difference. Anybody's game. As we wait now for Hardy to bring the ball back into play for Footscray. Bernie Quinlan's got it. It's a bad kick. And old Superboot's well within kicking distance for Foot Superboot anyway. He'd be about 45 metres out from goal on a slight angle. But against the breeze, though. Yes, against the breeze. I wonder if he'll kick the old torpedo putt or go for the modern uh, drop punt kick here. There he comes, and let's look at it go through. It's a, just a wobbly old punt kick, but it comes around beautifully for a goal, and Fitzroy are in front. It became obvious very early that Gary Pert and Paul Ruse were the central figures of Fitzroy's season. And Gary Pert was a champion fullback, and at times he did play on the half forward line. And, uh, you know, he acquitted himself very well when he did play on the half forward line. A great kick, magnificent mark, and just a mean defender. He was terrific for us in those days. We probably had two of the best defenders in the competition with Paul Ruse playing at centre half back. And uh, as we've seen from Paul Ruse this year playing at Sydney, he's really showing, showing what he can do. Now, he has been a great player. And it was the right move for him to make when he did leave Fitzroy, I feel, because getting towards the end of his career, he really didn't need to probably just get another, uh, another challenge that he could really meet head on. And he's shown that he is a great player this year at Sydney. Yeah, we're travelling pretty well at that stage. And, and uh, as I say, uh, I suppose we're playing at the top of our confidence. When you get a good start, any year. I mean, it's, it's great to get those wins on the board early in the season. So um, a few years earlier, we just about kicked, we had kicked the record score against Melbourne in 1979. So if, I think we always look forward to meeting Melbourne. We had a pretty good record against them. Leon Harris at left half back flank. Turner standing on the mark. Harris not wasting any time though. Fires out the hand pass and Fitzroy go forward. As the ball is driven up towards Bernie Quinlan, marking over the top of Hughes. That was a great uh, mark by Quinlan, positioned himself beautifully to take that mark in front of uh, Danny Hughes, and he's a pretty rugged customer, so I should imagine Quinlan will be in for some curry today. He could just about kick this Bernie Quinlan, the old super boot himself. He's got the distance, I'll wait on the accuracy, first goal to Fitzroy. A hand pass coming out the big till, and now he's got to bend down to pick this up, he's out, but it's a fresh air shot, picked up by... Uh, Keane, Keane's kick is over the half forward, that's a great mark to Rendell, and the Fitzroy skipper's got it about, uh, let me see no more than about 35 metres out from goal directly in front. Rendell playing in the forward pocket so far, Tilly's done all the ruck work. Now that heavy, uh, that thigh very heavily bandaged, as you can see the right thigh, as he comes in for the kick for their third goal, and that's a nice kick, it's a goal, so Fitzroy... Runs into a bit of trouble, but gets out. A good pass to Leon Harris. Another hand pass coming over, and we see the ball picked up by Thornton again. A long hand pass back there towards Rendell. He couldn't bend. Bernie Quinlan grabs it. A hand pass comes out now to uh, McIver. A hurried kick, and Osborne's got a point in front. Only about uh, 20 metres out. Well, that was a bit of scrambly play, but still Fitzroy came, coming off the best. 
or the better. 29 plays, 33 in favour of Fitzroy, uh, in favour of Melbourne, but now Fitzroy are back in front. Oh, there's a great mark. It should be paid to Blakey, but he's got time to recover. Take that ball on the wing position. He'll go for a hand pass to McIver. He's in trouble. Bucket goes again to Pert. Out there at half forward, a long kick up there to Bernie Quinlan and his mob. There's Quinlan with one hand to it. Couldn't pick it up. Picked up by Knight. A snap at goal. He might have got this one. It'll hit the post. No goal. It's a goal. Detroit lead by a point. Seventh big league. 26 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Great game of football here at the park. Lyon goes for the hand pass. Picked up by Robbie Flower in front of Turner. Flowers kick trying to find Reynolds. Outmarked though on this occasion by Blakey. Blakey at centre half back. Goes straight down the ground. Up to the centre circle area. McIver, fine grab in front of Peter Moore. He's got on top of stretch now. Picked up by Big Rendell going for a short pass. Straight down the field. Bernie Quinlan. I think a super game, Bernie Quinlan. If Sensational could, game. If he could kick straight. Now, Bernie Quinlan has had 11 kicks. And he's kicked one goal, six, which is unbelievable for him. I reckon he'll kick this one. Let's see how he goes. Hasn't let me down. Two goals, six for Bernie Quinlan and Fitzroy increased their lead. Punched away game by stretch, grabbed by Pekin. A short pass out wide. It'll be OK. And the ball marked here by Bernie Harris. But Harris has got it out there at half forward. He goes for a short pass, looking for Osborne. He doesn't let him down. And he takes the mark right on the boundary line about put his head through the wire fence then too takes a bit of getting out when he gets jammed in those holes he's had 10 kicks your head had never fit through and of course it would and three hand passes hasn't been a bad play but we've seen him play a lot better than he has today but you let this guy loose for about five minutes he cuts the side to pieces there's the kick on its way and that's not a bad sort of a shot it'll be a goal what a great shot by Osborne did he play on Oh, that was an interesting decision too. Ball scooped out from the left half forward flank again. It's picked up by McIver. He seems to be everywhere, this fellow. And a beautiful pass goes to Conlon. He decides to play on. Shoots a goal. That looks pretty good. And the goal on pass is four points. It'll go to Rendell. Probably someone stood on his foot. Short kick, not a bad pass. Without any boots on, a good mark taken here by Brown out there at half forward. Fitzroy, ten points in front. And we're just on the 26-minute mark. About two or three minutes to go before the game. That's Bernie Quinlan flying. Couldn't hold the mark. Regalo couldn't pick it up. It's going for the boundary line. I think Barr. No, he hasn't taken it out. This could be a goal. Let's see the result. That's the clinch if it is. It is. Once you get those early wins on the board, the ball starts rolling. Everyone's got their confidence. Uh, their confidence is sky high. Everyone's feeling terrific about themselves. And uh, you really want to be out there and playing football. After its best start since 1951, Fitzroy's dream run ended in round four. Carlton finding 13 goal kickers in an 81-point demolition of the Roys. Harris, probably Fitzroy's best player. Easily, Peter, easily the best player. They haven't had too many. Mickey Conlon, short pass to Quinlan, a goal number three. Into the goal square to Big Tilly, and Tilly doesn't mess around with that one. And puts it through for, well, can we say a badly needed one for Fitzroy? It was back to the winner's list seven days later when Matt Rendell led the Lions to a 14-point victory over Hawthorne. Play but not getting goals. Ball tapped back again. Going out was McGuire. He's been in everything since the start of the game. But Leon Harris back to Osborne. He's grabbed well tackled that time by uh, Deer. Over it goes to Perth. That could be their first goal. It is. Oh, about time. Pushed out by Byrne, grabbed by Mew, the ball kicked back out wide to Judge, it bounces okay, but he runs into trouble there, couldn't get the ball back, it goes to Hinch and a bad hand pass, over to Rendell again, he fires it, goal, and he's put it through for one, so they move to eight goals, 21. Offloaded by Osborne, over the top was Gary Pert, picked up by Hinchin, or was it uh, the, the, the other Osborne? Richard Osborne, now Harris, got a chance for a goal here, now he's given it to Quinlan, Bernie's first, couldn't miss from there, two metres out, and a badly needed one for Fitzroy with the breeze. Ball in the meantime, back to the centre wing position where Perth takes position, I tell you what, though, he'd be just about their best, wouldn't he, surely? I think he's played a great game. This is Rowe, at the right half forward line, Hawthorne looking uninterested in proceedings at the moment, Rowe has a shot at goal, that's another one, put down your glasses. The Lions are home and hose in this one, 11-23, 89 to 6-9, 45.
I don't think they could do that, but still, full credit to them. They fought back from a deficit of 50 points when they looked, as you said, in a hopeless place at the final change. Lou Harris, oh, could have been a free kick there for holding the man. He's still got clear shoots. That's it. That's the ball game, folks. Harris putting through his second goal of the day, and that will sew it up for Fitzroy, 13-26 to 13-12. From the middle, the opportunity for McIver to swing Fitzroy into attack. Down towards Quinlan, how's the bounce? Not good for him, but it's right for Gary Pert into the open goal. He steadies and scores a level. So Pert and Fitzroy, the lightning reply. Osborne trying to fly from behind. He recovers well, picks it up now, gets solidly met. Tried to get the handball out, couldn't do so. And eventually trying to sneak away was Brendan Bower. Bernie Harris now towards full forward. The bounce could favour Quinlan. He can just soccer it through. Bernie. A dream bounce for Mr. Quinn. The hand pass comes there from Walsh to Landy. Long kick from Landy. Roberts was in the front position. It's punched away. Taken by Leon Harris. Across to Graham Osborne. Osborne now steadies. Looks for his brother Richard. Pools there, but oh, Richard Osborne takes the mark. And normally an excellent kick for goal. He's only 35 metres out, about a 45 degree angle. Should have no trouble at all with the distance. And if he kicks as he normally does, the accuracy as well. Looking for his first. Kicking right into the Richmond cheer squad. The right foot drop bunt on its way. And the goal off us is no problem. Bounce to take place. Forward pocket for Fitzroy. On the bounce. Jess was up high, but nobody could take it until Quinlan picks it up. Snaps towards goal. He's the, from the check side, and it's through for one goal. Quinlan against Jess. Quinlan grabs it from the ruck. The left foot snap from Quinlan. For oh. the great goal, Bernie Quinlan. Bomber James, but first to it, Michael Reeves. Good support, Paul Roos. Stabs one in towards McIver at centre wing, and he takes it. The talented youngsters for Fitzroy. McIver's kick four, oh. four over the top. And he is a sensational player. Gary Pert. Jimmy will have a second thump, but straight to Leon Harris. In trouble. Looks for Gary Pert. Goes further away to Grant Laurie. Swings it back in towards half forward. Great mark, Douglas Bowles. Uh, Phil Egan is okay up again. So Douglas trying with a drop punt. And Bernie Quinlan just walks away applauding, saying, Thank you very much, Douglas. Has the lead from Poole. He doesn't let him down. He's able to come on. He's got the lead from Burton, but swings it back towards Manton in the centre. And a great mark by Paul Roos. Coming across from the side, into the front position, and Roos, as usual, has been an excellent player. Leon Harris with a hand pass to Barwick. Barwick puts it down, looking for Quinlan. Jess up high, dumps it away, but it goes to the opposition. Roos picks it up, stabs at the goal, and it's 11 point lead held by Fitzroy as Paul Roos continued on down the ground. Scores level at the end of this game. Who knows? Barwick sending Fitzroy forward as he scoots away up towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Waiting down at the back was Osborne. Gives it across to Mickey Conlon. Mick, you can cover yourself in glory. He fires towards goal and puts it through. One thing that really uh, sticks in my mind the ball was in the forward pocket, and both Richard Osborne and I were playing on the forward line, and it was in dispute. The ball was in dispute, and it sort of bounced up in the air. I remember. Richard Osborne and myself crashed into each other trying to grab the ball and kick that winning goal or, or the point to, to draw the game. And I think I grabbed the ball and kicked it out of bounds. So, you know, it could have been easily a win for us or at least a drawn game. But, I mean, that's, that remains vividly in my mind. They made hard work of it. 
but the Lions moved two games clear inside the five by beating the bottom of the oh, Ladder St Kilda at Martelly. home. Conlon and the dashing Conlon strides through the centre. That familiar one bounce straightens up and goes for the long one down to goals. What's he done? He's trying to put it through. Great goal, Mickey Conlon. That game that was there, that we were doing everything we wanted to do in the first half and doing it quite easily. And all of a sudden, uh, they got a bit of a sniff and away they went. This can quite easily happen. And they just ran over us in that last quarter. Matty Rindell was playing forward pocket. And Keith Gregg was playing in the back pocket. It was towards the end of his career. And Matty was doing terrifically well. <laughs> he was killing Keith Gregg because he had such a height advantage over him. And it happened that I was on a lead. And Keith Gregg sort of drifted across in front of me and took the mark and I was on the lead and, and just happened to keep going and clean him up and I think he dislocated his shoulder. And so they brought this other <laughs> this other bloke on to Matty Rindell who, and he was a bigger guy when Keith Gregg went off and Matty didn't get a kick after that so <laughs> so my running through Keith Gregg I don't think did the team any favours. <laughs> well here's Graham Osborne, the centre wing to Richard Osborne, sneaking away from uh, John Law. A long handball, Tim Pekin. Another one fun, but finds Barwick. Barwick hooking it up towards uh, Rendell. The forward line couldn't take it. Quinlan reads it beautifully, takes the crumbs and has goal. You put it right up towards the square. McDonald in the front position. Roos got rid of him and takes the mark. Paul Roos plays on. Graham Osmond, the player he's looking for, finds him. The hand pass comes over the top to Blakey. Blakey doing likewise, finds Grant Laurie. Laurie coming up towards centre wing. Looks for Richard Osborne at half forward and he takes the mark. Plays on immediately. The hand pass towards Bill Loken. Loken hooks it back, looking for Quinlan. Quinlan and McCann. McCann up high, punches the ball away. McIver comes through. A hand pass towards Conlon. Conlon's kick with a great goal to Michael Conlon. And Michael Conlon brings up his second goal. One that was badly needed by Fitzroy. Because they'd won in 84 and 85, and they were expected again to win in 1986. They were just a machine. They, they kept going. People were wondering how they would ever be beaten or knocked, o knocked over for another premiership because they were so good in 84 and 85. But uh, maybe they just got a little bit lax with their attitude in that year, in 1986, and probably expected it all to happen, as, can, as we've seen happen so often on, on many other occasions. But uh, we had some great duels with Essendon in that time. And it is he, Jamie Cooper, in the way, and he clears for Fitzroy. Good play by Cooper. Over to Richard Osborne at centre half, fought out wide. Bruce again. Bruce out there on the wing position, goes for a pass. It's a good one, marked there by Rendell. Rendell, about 60 metres out, goes for a pass. And the ball is marked here by Keane. Now, Keane, well within kicking distance, about 35 metres out from goal. He's on a 45-degree angle and could easily kick this one. No goal scored by either side as yet. There it is on its way. We'll wait on the result. You're out of business. And that's the goal. The first one. Good luck to Keane. One goal, two, eight points. Uh, Fitzroy to Western yet to score a goal, one point only. One by Madden, picked up by Clayton. Clayton puts Fitzroy into attack, and they haven't done much of that of late. And the mark taken at half forward by Wind. He's certainly come out as a real trial today. They need somebody. Quinlan, now it's Osborne leading out, and Osborne takes the mark and would be within kicking distance, and Fitzroy badly need one at the moment. Not too much in it, but a low scoring game, and Essendon's lead looking rather handsome, even though it is just over a couple of goals. Osborne from about 30 metres out, 30 to 35 metres, on a slight angle. The crowd behind the goal like it. The goal umpire says four points. That could be nearly in the back. Oh, I reckon it was. It'll go to Ruse. I think I like these umpires. As it comes out now to Hurt, overruns the ball. Knight gets a hurried kick off the side of his boot. Up the top of the pack again. Little win's got a chance to score. And what's he done? He's pulled through. Good play from the ex-bummer. And there's only a point in the difference again. So that's a good comeback by Fitzroy. Three goals, 2-20 to Essendon. Three goals, 3-21. kick is up there towards the centre of the ground. He was up in it after he kicked the ball. The up will play a free kick. He's called player now as Barry Bates clear. A long hand pass. A chance now for 
Fitzroy's called to the make scores level. He has. So it's a dead set ball game here now. Scores dead level. Four goals for 28 points apiece. Running on the decision, or well, the kick, I should say. Let's see it. It's on its way. That's a high kick. By golly, it is a long kick. It could be a mark there to Kane. I think he's got it. He was moved down to the full forward or forward pocket area after he was injured. And Quinlan's gone off the ground, as we mentioned before. So scores will be dead level. And this We've one... had a lot of Achilles problems uh, doing the big pre-season under David Parkin. And uh, I was as fit as a fiddle in the pre-season, but I, uh, from round three onwards, I started to get a lot of Achilles problems. And I came off and I think Dickie Osmond went to full forward that day. But I remember it well because I was sitting on the bench for most of the game. Mark taken by McGrath. And McGrath's played a fair game today, Pete. He has, McGrath. Oh, yes, that's a fine grab. That's uh, Keane. He's a long kick, this fellow, as we watched that in replay. Too tall down there for Hamilton. Had the sit. He kicked the first goal of the match. Well within kicking distance for him. That looks pretty good. It's a goal. Well shepherded. Clayton. Barwick. On it goes to Laurie. Long. Down towards full forward. Almost a mark to McGrath. Thompson right there with him. Shoots out the hand pass. Taken away by McIver. Into the goal square. Wind is it bounce kindly for him. Coming off the ground goal. Plus one mark. Not too many hand pass. One point the difference. A real thriller now. Neither Rendell nor Madden can get a tap at the ball. A little Knight again, and he's played well. Knight, long kick, up the full forward. Thompson, can't gather it in. Assistance from Foles. Wind, caught. Out it comes to Grant Laurie, a snapshot in the goal. Osborne hasn't done much today, but this time for Troyer in front. And Osborne combining well. It's his second goal. 6-10-7, 72-67. Seven, 17 points the difference and the line's looking good. There's a crash up there now as we see the ball. Phillips comes out now, the ball kick wide. And they're going back into attack through uh, Barwick. Over it goes now to Conlon. A hand pass comes back as a charge from the goal. McGrath balks over to the man of the match. There he fires again. Richard Osborne, another one. 23 points. Is he killing him down there? Harris, Barwick again. Long hand pass into Laurie. Laurie onto the left foot in a snapshot. Oh, two Western players collide. Osborne! Oh, he's done it again! It's a goal! Richard Osborne having the most purple of patches. 15-7 to 10-7. Fitzroy by far. With Quinlan out, Richard Osborne moved in as Fitzroy's focal point against Sydney. Yeah, it was the start of the handing over the mantle because uh, I did miss eight games in 1986 and it was Aussie's chance to, to show what he could do at full forward. I think he ended up kicking about 62 for the season. I ended up kicking 52. But, uh, you know, he's obviously a, he was very talented and he could kick goals from anywhere. Aussie was a great kick and a very good lead and a terrific mark on the lead. So uh, we had the ideal replacement for myself and I uh, ultimately retired at the end of 86. Thought he should have got the other one before but anyway that's history now. McGrath down towards Osborne. Great grab. Should have been a free kick I to do. I reckon it should have been. The rule says five metres and you can't do that. <laughs> that's right. Try telling it to tell you right now. That's right. Fairly good nudge that time. Not seen by the umpire. And he's about the same distance that Leon Harris was out, so let's see what he does. That's another one, it looks like. He's put that through, so there's only a couple in it. Osborne's fourth goal. There's a bit of messing about to Rendell. Back to McIver, they're further back than they were when he started. Or picked up by Peek. It spins out of the pack beautifully over to Cooper. But back it comes down to a Turner. Turner sidesteps a couple of a long hand pass. Over to Leon Harris. A hand pass should be going for the goals. Now Blake is gonna have a butt shot. We'll wait on the result. That's a goal. But I think the horses bolted now, Bob. You can't close the gate. Walk all over you.
The Lions hit the halfway mark of the season with a disappointing display against the Pies. Points the difference in favour of Collingwood. Williams putting through his first goal. Chance for Conlon. Breaks the tackle well from centre field. Mickey Conlon up towards the Joy centre half forward position. Perch there. Gets the ball to the ground. Abernathy in the road. Chance for Phillips playing well in the first quarter. Socket away again by Conlon. Up it goes to his mate Barwick. Barwick has a shot at goal. That looks pretty good. Goal. Collingwood 20 points to Fitzroy 6. Oh, there's a strong mark. And that was taken by McGrath. He's a good player this year. Well, he, the last City. time we were here and they played against, I think it was Essendon, he played a magnificent game at centre-half forward. Back it goes again. Gafer in front. Both he and uh, tap back again. It's a go for Rosman. Now he's kicked it off the ground. He's got one. Well, that's one blemish against Gafer. Over it goes to Barwick. A quick hand pass. Over it goes to Knight. Back to McGrath. A long shot at goal. And he's on target. It's a goal. Well, they'll have to rattle the tins a bit harder, it would appear, for Fitzroy. In front is Banks again, Ruse knocks that one clear, Harris fires out the hand pass, it's picked up by Pekin, by Laurie rather. Gay for an Osmond, Osmond playing in front this time from his shadow, takes the mark right on the 40 metre line. Scoreboard in the background doesn't look too good from the Fitzroy point of view, Osmond decides to get the ball moving quickly. A long shot at goal from 40 metres out is going close. It's a goal, says the goal umpire. Conlon, but coming in to meet it now as Knight, but Morewood's still there. They overrun the ball. Lots of fortune for Collingwood. Morewood picks it up, but Abernathy couldn't grab it. Tapped on by Harris. Knocked on again by Pert after he missed it. Back to McGrath. A hand pass coming back to Conlon. The tank, that's fly at the goals. And I think he might be successful. He's got it through for a goal. They badly need it. Now outside the five, with six wins and a poor percentage, season 86 could go either way. After such a good start that we had, it was probably disappointing to be in that position with a very low percentage, but uh, we probably did let our chances slip a little bit in 86 because, as I say, you know, we did win those first three games and, and won them well, and to be probably six and five at the halfway mark after being three zip after three games is a very disappointing result to be there at that stage. Scott McIver. So McIver across the half forward line. He's about 60 metres out from goal. The lead from Quinlan, but ignored that the first time, and then when Quinlan went the other way and led again, that uh, pass, a real grass cutter, and the Quinlan showing that age, if you're a great athlete, doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, that just about hurt, Bernie. <laughs> oh, no. We've got to get up after this. Let's see what he can do. He's a great player. Drop player. He misses the and he hasn't missed that one. The Lions are on the board. Then gets the kick to half forward. Paul Roos under no pressure takes the ball. It's another of the great. There are the two boys, two great players. Pert and Roos. Out wide to birthday Cooper. Quickly on. McIver. Clayton. The kick, oh, it's a good one too. McGrath takes it at half four. And suddenly Fitzroy are starting to get their game in the motion. The passionate pleas in the past weeks from people from all walks of life to keep the club afloat. But at this time of the week, Saturday afternoon, it comes back to the players. McGrath's kick straight through the middle. Clayton across to Conlon. A long kick from Conlon. Quinlan, Osmond at the back, should have stayed down. Quinlan was up, but it comes out to Osmond. It's taken off him by Mitchell. Kicked off the ground by Richard Osmond. Full points off the ground for his first goal. From the bounce, Mossop gets the tap. And Geelong penalised as Morgan couldn't get the ball clear. And so Matt Rendell, a good tackle by Rendell. Swings the ball in towards the centre, hoping for McGrath. Over the back it comes. Barwick taps the ball forward. Gets a favourable bounce and breaks through the tackle from centre half forward. Barwick goes down towards the square and the mark taken right in the square, only five metres out, directly in the middle of the goal square. And that is Richard Osmond, who I'm sure 
will bring up his second goal. Kick from Richard Osmond. There's no doubt about that. The goal umpire did not move, and Richard Osmond kicks his second. What about going short? Now it does go short. Oh, and Carey took it, lost it. It's picked up by Richard Osmond. A snap towards goal. And that is a ripper. Well, there's the folly of short passes from fullback. Three goals for the quarter to Richard Osmond. Steve Carey did a great job in the first term, but uh, dropped it at the wrong time just then. And a lovely goal to Richard Osmond. Fitzroy out of trouble. They're clear. The long kick from Jamie Cooper to the half forward line. Osmond takes the mark. They're looking dangerous again as Knight runs down. He's going to ignore him. He'll go long. Quinlan and Malarkey vying. Quinlan breaks clear into the pocket and he takes the mark. Bernie has kicked two. Let's see what he can do with this one. Tucked on the boundary line. Might need a check side. But no, favours a drop punt. What a lovely kick. What a beautiful kick. An excellent player today. Mossop gets the tap that time, though. Clayton's short kick. Knocked back by Mossop. Clayton held when not in possession of the ball. And Scott Clayton comes out with the free kick. Handballs immediately to Grant Laurie. Laurie goes forward and finds Scott McIver. McIver with a long hand pass to Rendell, who taps it on to Knight. Knight goes goal. Well, it's a nice-looking kick, and... Quinlan lets it go through, and Knight brings up his second goal. From the back pocket. Had a horror day last week. Osmond. Gives it clear to Cooper. Forward they go through Harris. Quinlan again, the target, thumped down. Oh, here's a chance for Billy, but he's called the advantage, and Billy will go. Logan does, straight over the Sheriff stand, and Kiss that football, good night. Now Harris, oh, they're combining nicely. Harris will go long and direct. Quinlan sets himself, and it takes a beauty. Played, Bernie. You could see he had his name written on that one. He had the ride, saw it coming, and it was lovely disposal. So the old chap will have a shot. Appreciate that. It's oh, he doesn't. He was going to be a chook farmer, you know. He's kicked three. You can make that four. Well done, Bernie Quinlan. has given the free kick to Fitzroy and David Parkin is delighted. And that's uh, Laurie who kicks to half forward. Keane uh, got one in the back then, I thought, from Kennedy, but play on, says the umpire. Play on the half-forward line, and swinging round now is Barwick to shoot for goal, and he's put it through for Fitzroy's first goal, and scores a level. Centre wing out of sight of the ground. Keane for Fitzroy, Purser over the back. Gets the tap down towards Royal, fed out by Harris to Tilly, and Tilly kicks it towards full forward. In front, McGrath can't mark, punched away by Kellett. Richard Osborne there, over the top. Shot for goal, will bounce through for a goal to Fitzroy. Badly needed one, first goal to Osborne. It's McGrath against Purser, who's dominated the rucks. Trying to go through there was Mitchell up. Nice hand pass though to Conlon, out to Clayton who shoots for goal, and he's put it through. And that was some nice play then by uh, Fitzroy, and a good hand pass, and that may give the uh, Lions a little bit of heart. Fitzroy trailing miserably by 63 points. Kicker of the football is Clayton. Kicks it in towards the uh, front of the goal square. Good high mark taken by Pert. And there is little reaction even from Fitzroy supporters in the outer from that mark because the Lions have played miserably so far in this match. And the result is on the scoreboard. They trail by 63 points. 23 minutes into the third quarter. Gary Perth punts for goal. Goal umpire moves across slightly, but it's a goal to Fitzroy. And Gary Perth registers his first goal. Fitzroy sixth. Fitzroy 6 4 40. Trailing by 57 points. The Bulldogs are 15 7 97. Now, Egan will go for a run, has a little look around. Decides to kick long to half forward again. Oh, and a 
great mark to Paul Roos. Hawkins in with a chance again, trying to be a little bit too clever, outnumbered, three Fitzroy players, it's probably one of the only times during the day that they've done it, Turner comes clear and kicks at the half forward for Fitzroy, Rance is there for Footscray, but Conlon breaks clear, crashes through a hardy tackle, and Conlon goes goalwards with a big long kick, it's offline and a behind to Fitzroy. He goes back, looks further afield, gets the lead, from McGrath, fisted away from him. Laurie is there. Clayton, a quick kick. It's Pekin. Pert from 55 metres out. It's for goal. Osborne can shove it, and it's a beautiful goal to Gary Pert. Oh, and a good uh, tackle then uh, by uh, Mitchell. But uh, Footscray not deterred, come through as McIver tries to get it. Now, this is something positive as Barwick has it now. Over the top to Osborne. No, Barwick decides to fake the dummy and have a shot for goal. And he's put it through. Well, Barwick has decided to do it all by himself and he's kicked his second goal. And he and Gary Pert are the only multiple goal kickers for the Bulldogs. Round 14 was the low point of the year. The week before Melbourne lost to St Kilda in what was to be the Saints' only win of the season. But somehow the Dees made Fitzroy look like wooden spooners. That along with the loss against Footscray a couple of weeks before, to get uh, beaten by I think 80-odd 80, 80 points by Footscray and 40-odd points by Melbourne who weren't considered to be top sides at the time, well, when, you, you know, when you're trying to win premierships, you just have to have a more even performance all the way through. You can't afford to have losses such as that. I mean, at least if you have losses, they should be a really competitive loss. Our losses seem to be hidings. He's a matter of two metres out. One of Bernie's favourite distances, this. Good play by Dean Turner. On to Richard Osborne and uh, a good strong mark by Bernie Quinlan. Quinlan playing game number 361, comes in for goal number 794 and makes absolutely no mistake. He'll go for the torpedo. It's a on to whopping one. one too. He'll be more than happy with that and kick to kick. And standing his ground right underneath is uh, one of the best defenders in this country, Paul Ruse. Boy yeah, from be... Beverly Hills. Yes. Lovely pass too and he finds Richard Osborne. Comes through with the arm up. Protecting himself. Naturally. And uh, Richard Osborne, I don't know if he'll look for a pass on this occasion or he might kick for goal. He might investigate the possibilities of a goal there, Stephen. Well, I think he might put this one right through. Richard Osborne. High kick, a long kick and straight through the middle. Fitzroy's fourth, they move to 4-3, 27. They're halfway to Melbourne, score of 8-6, 54. 23 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. Tilly gets the tap on. Fitzroy are away this time. They go wide. Stephen Stretch again after that long run. Hasn't had time to catch his breath, but I don't think he minds. It's amazing what a goal will do. He'll have plenty of time to think about that one. Yates comes out with it. Slips at the vital moment. Mitchell gets the hand pass out. McGrath over to Laurie. Back to Conlon. Here go the Lions. He one can run bounce. into goal. He can run into goal here. He'll have a shot and a goal. Nicky Conlon knows where the goals are. If there to be any chance, they've had a look at the, at the uh, three-quarter time scoreboard and s have seen that there's a place in the five waiting for them. Quinlan can't take the mark. Melbourne clear. Conlon underneath it again, and Mickey Conlon takes the mark. Been an inspiring leader today, Mickey. Goes for the short pass, goes wide. It's a lovely pass, and it's taken by McGrath. This is Craig McGrath. He's um, 40 metres out. We think kicking distance. Has tried all day and uh, been in front. But uh, Peter Moore punched the ball away on a number of occasions. His sixth senior game, going for the sixth goal of his career. That's a good looking one too, and that's the way the Lions wanted to start. The Roys recovered soon enough, but of even more significance than the six point result against Carlton was the emergence of a 21 year old recruit from Kuroit named Mark Dwyer. Yeah, well, he was a surprise packet, wasn't he, in 1986? He came from nowhere, and uh, he was a little tubby bloke who ran around the wing, and no one really thought of him much as a, as a player. He didn't look like a player anyway, but 
he really produced the goods for us in 1986 and ended up with, I think, 10 Brownlow votes for the year and really came from nowhere. He was a real surprise packet and uh, really did very little after that. But in 1986, he was terrific. He was great for us. Back line going short to Ruse, who's made good position. He can hand pass in now towards Conlon. He can go out wider if he wanted. He's going to back himself against Feldrum. He goes toward goal and he's got it. It's a nice piece of work set up by Dwyer. He brings it down towards half forward. Over the back, a chance for Graham Hinchin to Thornton. They're backing up well. Over it comes to uh, Hinchin again as he gets it out wide to Young Dwyer. I, I reckon he's nearly best man on the ground, this kid. He's At the moment, Mark Dwyer, off he goes. Oh, get rid of it, son. He tried to do too much. Oh, he should have kicked it as long as he could. Well done to Reeves. Reeves, a hand pass. or oh, an ordinary one. Looking for Clayton. Alvin's there also. Backing up is Mickey Conlon. Conlon's got it. Hooks it back. Duel and Osborne. Oh, here's a chance over to Little DeWire. DeWire into the open goal. Stamps. Oh, that was beautiful football by Fitzroy. Madden down to the ground. DeWire. Oh, good roving by the little fella on the right foot. The Osborne, yes. He's marked it now. Difficult he is shot. right on the boundary line. He should try and centre. No, he's going for the left foot snap at goal. He's oh, got that it. is a great goal. That is a top goal by Richard Osborne as he slams through his fourth. And Fitzroy are doing it well. The scoreboard. Fitzroy after an intelligent goal. 7-8-50. Leading Carlton 4-6-30. Very good goal indeed. I suppose that would be the best goal we've seen kicked today. A 47-point drubbing by Collingwood put a game between the Lions and the top five. The Pies booting 15 second half goals to two. Back to McIver. McIver a pass to right half forward. Tried to find Barrett or Osborne. The ball bounces past Osborne. Gets a brilliant bounce. Osborne gets clear, shoots at goal and has put it through for four points. Knocked down by McEwen. Barham just about caught. Two Fitzroy players are out there. Finally, it's picked up by uh, Blakey. Out to Barwick at centre field. Going through the sand traps. A bit like Turnbury up there. Williamson. Williamson at half forward. Actually, that goal that Mickey Conlon got and was penalised for just before half time might have made all the difference, you know. When he was penalised for running too far. It's history now, of course. Williamson has a chance for their first goal since half time. He might have got it, it is, and that came up at the 15 and a half minute mark of the final quarter. A long time between drinks for Fitzroy. Williamson's first goal, Fitzroy's 11th, 11 8 to 17 11. Finally goes long and almost straight up the ground, tries to find Phillips. Ruse grabbed, did he have the ball? Picked up by Gaifer, gets it back to Williams. And the hand pass comes out to Barwick from McIver. The goal umpire says it's a goal. Yes. These boots are made for walking. That's just what they'll do. So there's now back to Rocket Eve. Now Ayers again. Out of trouble. Out to the uh, outer wing. Little Dwyer is flying for the football. The little Karoit boy. If you can tell me that's good football, Sandy. Now it looked good back here when they did that nice, pretty handball. Pekin puts the ball forward. Oz oh! Well, that's not bad football. Dwyer, that's who we're focusing on, has a chance to go along with that left foot in towards full forward. At the back is Osborne, has it tapped away, pushed wide. Who's going to be first to it? Picked up by Bolden, hooks over the shoulder, in towards Osborne. And he's taken them. Good play by McGrath. Play on and goal. He does. His second, and Fitzroy answer the challenge. What looked like a knee injury. Reeves gets a tap. McGrath taps the ball on. The ball falls forward over the back. A chance of a goal. Bolden gets a favourable bounce. Goes Goldwood. And the first goal in league football for young Darren Bolden. And he has acquitted himself excellently today. We always had a pretty good record against Hawthorne. Even back in, uh, in 83 when we went within four points of beating them in the qualifying final. And they went on to win the flag that year which probably was an even better chance for us to win the flag in 83 than it was in 86, because had we got over Hawthorne, we'd beaten um, in 83 North Melbourne, who were then the top side, 
by 150 points at the junction oval. So we were, I don't know, I can't remember what position we were on the ladder, but North were on top of the ladder and we beat them by 150 points, which was quite amazing. I mean, if the side was on top of the ladder this year and I beat them by 150 points, you'd think, gee, what's going on? But that's how well we were travelling in 83. And we were very unlucky not to beat Hawthorne, as I say, in that qualifying final. They got up and pipped us by four points. But however, as I was, the, real, the point I was really making was that we'd always been very competitive and uh, usually probably beat Hawthorne nine times out of ten, even when they were a great side. In towards the middle. Picked up by Thornton to half forward. And the mark taken by Bolden. Has kicked one. And the boy from South Warrnambool would certainly be enjoying this day. Opening his career, his BFL career, with the Lions. He snuck it home, has he? He has! Centre wing, Hinchin up high, ball comes to ground, well done Graham Hinchin, chips it in towards centre half forward and backing bow, oh, one hand up was Mickey Collin, now he gets a lucky break, goes Goldwood and he's replied for Fitzroy. Victories over Richmond and St Kilda made it three in a row and carried Fitzroy back into the five, some of the lesser known Lions starring. It's going to be a free kick or a mark, it'll be played to, to Pert, Pert at the back there, hand pass, Ross Thornton. Plenty of time. One bounce there to Blakey. Blakey just the hand pass. Hinchin. Graham Hinchin for a start was just a terrific back pocket player. And uh, probably we didn't see enough of Graham Hinchin. He was a very, very determined back pocket player. Had a lot of flair, used the ball well, could take a great high mark. He was often seen in Channel 7 highlights taking a high mark. Uh, and Billy Loken, very quiet guy off the field, but very skillful and uh, he used the ball well for us and played terrific football for us in the centre for a long time. One hand, Tim Peakin now, trying to set up with a handball. Well done, now centering it is Billy Logan. No, he's shooting for goal. What a miraculous goal. Inconsistency continued to plague the club. North Melbourne pushing the Lions down to seventh with a 32-point win. Well on top of 200 gamer Steve McCann. He's got to have a shot again, but he was thinking about passing the ball. Yeah, so we're struggling at this stage, aren't we? We've got two rounds to go. North Melbourne's beaten us twice throughout the year, and uh, we're not really travelling like a top side at that stage. But, uh, you know, probably we really had to finish off with a burst to get anywhere in 86, and, and uh, that was a bad loss to North Melbourne. We really needed to win just about every game, but things started to pick up after that. So the finals virtually started two weeks early. It was elimination time against fourth placed Essendon, with the Swan sitting second to follow. And Fitzroy starting well. Lovely pass into the half forward line and the mark taken by Craig McGrath. So McGrath at centre half forward. The actual mark itself is about 40 metres out from goal, so he'll probably kick from just short of 50 metres. Craig McGrath. Essendon yet to score, Fitzroy with one point on the board as McGrath puts a lovely kick forward. One goal, one now, Fitzroy, and it's Craig McGrath's first goal, of course. One, one, Fitzroy, Essendon yet to score. Clark back to Harvey, oh. he spills it, taps the ball on though. Logan's there for Fitzroy, got the hand pass across to Clayton. Clayton puts it out to Bernie, Harris another goal, possibly. Harris puts it forward. Second goal of Fitzroy. Two goals, one goal on the board for Fitzroy with Bernie Harris kicking his first goal. And so far, Fitzroy's teamwork has been excellent. Bernie Harris contributing one, Craig McGrath another. 
and the Lions looking very, very dangerous. And he is stopping everything. Across to McIver. Scotty's kick, short. Out onto the wing, taken by Blakey. Across to Dean Turner, who goes long up towards the half forward line. Quinlan from behind, affects the spoil. Comes back to him. Snaps. Hooks it beautifully. Great goal, Bernie. And the Lions are roaring here at Windy Hill as Quinlan kicks his first and Fitzroy kicked their fourth. Back into play once again by Foles. Darnell has it twisted away. Osborne. Elshaw didn't go at him. Harris short. No, it was picked up on the half volley. Thompson's got a copper free kick. That away. Cooper. A poor tackle. And Geronimo. <laughs> That's what they call for like should, shouldn't they? Doesn't matter. As long as he's effective. And I think he's goal. He has. So Fitzroy kicked their eight. They do pretty hard to beat on their own dunghill. And uh, I suppose. Um, our, our record had been pretty good against Essendon over the years as well. I mean, we had terrific tussles throughout the 80s and the late 70s with Essendon. And having beaten them earlier in the season, I suppose we went into the game knowing that, well, we just had to perform and that was it. Robinson indicating where the mark is. And Logan now. Towards centre-half forward. McGrath in front. Punched away. Taken by Clayton. Vanderhaar punched it away. Clayton's kick goes forward. Well, it bounced down. Clayton the hand pass wide. Pert gives the long hand pass to Roos. Roos on to Loken. Loken with plenty of time, steadies. Puts it up towards the half forward line and the mark taken there by Craig McGrath. So McGrath, 55 metres out from goal. Swings it across the ground. Looking for Quinlan. Punched away there by Merritt for the free kick has been found. Oh, goodness. Dear, dear, dear. Uh, have it on good authority, Sandy, from one of your South Australian friends that it was a free kick. Well, you've got to trust the South Australians. <laughs> What's Roger saying? Not overly wrapped. There's the kick from Quinlan. He's not wrapped now. He's the, you're quite right. Great goal to Bernie Quinlan, his third. It was a very windy day here. I don't think I kicked a goal that day. And it was uh, playing on my old mate Rod Carter. It was just one of those terrible, I think, northerly winds that made it very, very difficult to play good football. Back down the grandstand flank. Quinlan. Chance for Barwick. Hinchin. Hinchin. Hinchin's put it through for a goal. And that's not a bad sort of an effort. And the Lions get first blood on the board at the one and a half minute mark of the first quarter. As the old Achilles stand up, I think we'll see Bernie Quinlan back. Uh, left foot snapshot, putting it through for Fitzroy as Harris. It's a goal. Well, Quinlan got that one down, but it wasn't a good knockout. Thrown out by Murphy, knocked on again by Healy, picked up that time by Logan. He might have got a goal, a heavy one. Yes, he's put it through. Good goal by Billy Logan then. Peek at a left half forward flank. Starting on the hand pass to McIver. Certainly not Queensland with it. And pass to Conlon. Conlon a goal. And that was great stuff from uh, Osborne. Reeves looks for the hand pass. Oh, it's a wild one. Down towards the edge of the square into the open spaces, certainly. Osborne gets it back to Clayton. Clayton, 20 metre hand pass to Barwick. Barwick into the goal square. But through! It's a goal! With the rain and the hail and the wind. And what a goal. Dwyer. And Bartholomew spike, geez, fast as fun. The other guy's tricky, Pete. Yes, he is. Dwyer on a common on the boundary line. Long kick by the tank. That's a miraculous shot. Is it through? Yes. Very long out towards right half forward bank. It's taken by McIver. Reeves at the 50 metre line. Looks for the handball. Barwick, dummies one. Shoots with the right foot. That's going close. It's there. The Lions first for the final term. That should just about make them home. Three goals to him. And the scoreboard in Simmons Big League. The Lions 9 18. The Swan 6 12.
the Roy boys didn't just make the five, they finished fourth with 13 wins and nine losses. I mean, we played two finals to get there already. Nothing had changed. It was a do or die affair again against Essendon. And uh, I just sat down and watched, I watched the 86, that elimination final the other day and went through the whole thing again and it was just a, an enormous game of football. As it was, we had a few injury problems. Uh, I pulled out with the Achilles again. It was giving me a hell of a lot of trouble at that stage. And I think Matty Rendell pulled out with a thigh injury. And as it turned out, it was one of those wet, drizzly, horrible winter's days out at Waverley. But uh, really, that we would have been too top heavy had we probably gone in with my, both myself and Rendell. So it was a blessing in disguise that both of us pulled out of that team. He would have got one otherwise. Duckworth, oh, it's not a mark. Duckworth snapshot will be Essendon's first score, and it's a goal. The ball out wide. This is Glenn Hawker going after it now on the 50 metre defence line. Pixie's had a fantastic season. This guy hasn't put a foot wrong all day. And look at him go around that boundary line. He's got about 100 yards. Oh, beautifully done from Perth, but picked up by Richardson. He's gone for a pass. Hawker breaks one tackle, shoots a goal from 25 metres out. It's a goal. Essendon in front. For Reeves at the 50 metre mark, did he throw that? The umpire said no, McIver doing pretty well. A long shot for goal, a beauty! Today, Reeves underneath it. Oh, and Mark Gully. Now towards right centre wing and Hawker. Oh, it should have been one for in the back, surely. It has been played, Pete. He's got us played a very good first quarter, Bob. Short pass. It's effective. Oh. oh, Mark, free kick, whatever, or might even be a booking. To come up. I certainly wouldn't bring Danaher into the play. Obvious free kick to Simon Madden, but it's been reversed. It'll go to Logan. Well, it might take be a his number. It's a booking. Onto Osborne. Onto Barwick. Barwick from half forward. Long kick with the breeze. Should just about be a score. It's close. It's a goal. Well, so far today. Oh, oh, that is too high. That's a booking. You can back that in. That has got to be a booking. And it's on. Now it finally comes back to Baker. A long kick with the breeze. Is a go. It's a point the difference at VFL Park. Now a chance for Leon Harris to Clayton. Clayton from right half forward flank. He's gone long up the full forward. There's no one there. Conlon finally. Was he grabbed? Second chance off the ground. Perhaps it had hit the behind post. No. Now it's through, I think, for a point. There's a good mark to Clayton. This fellow's a very strong player. That was a strong one. He took a pretty heavy knock then. Things becoming just a little bit good. Thornton in the thick of it. Waiting now for the ball to come back into play. Salmon knocked the ball out. Trapped by McIver doing a great job. Kicked off the ground by Harris. Damon off the ground. That's a bit of a blow. Must have got one on the nose there, Bob. It looks as though he's bleeding. Just look that way, Lou. Passed out of Baker. And Baker's good enough to make amends. Got one too high. The grass down behind play. Boys, the ball goes over their half quarter, but once again it's the bummer skipper taking that mark. Over it goes to uh, Donnell. A wobbly left foot punt kick. Now towards Richardson and Pert. In pursuit is Merritt. Well played by the Fitzroy fullback. Merritt. Still with him. Ball socket off the ground again. In comes Thompson. It's out of bounds now. Might be on the full. No, it wasn't. Boundary throw in on centre wing. Well played, Gary Pert. Harris in front. Now having a shot. Barwick. Was Barwick. And Barwick's put it through. With again, short to half forward. Walker seemingly everywhere. Marks but 50 metres from goal. Poor defence by Fitzroy. Bomber players everywhere. Richardson a clear shot at goal. Four points. He's not taking that. Plays on straight away. Out to Stephen Clark, who's just come back onto the ground. From 45 metres out, he can score one. He has the Bombers. Are going right on with the job. We were kicking into the wind in that last quarter. And uh, the... The day just deteriorated, it got worse as the day went on and everyone would, would have expected Essendon to run over us because they, they were kicking to the main scoreboard end in that last quarter with a fair, you know, a fair bit of breeze behind them but uh, it wasn't easy because the ball was so wet and slippery so it didn't make it easy for the forwards to, to kick goals and uh, old Mickey Conlon who hadn't had a touch all day, <laughs> he played on Michael Thompson and he probably, he'd had a horror day, well as I say it wasn't a day for forwards so it wasn't Mickey's fault, there wasn't a forward who dominated but uh, Leon Harris grabbed the ball out of the middle there and it was probably one of the great moments for Fitzroy when he grabbed the ball out of the middle there and Mickey somehow had got a 15 metre break on Michael Thompson and finished it off from about 30 metres I think it was Mickey and you just saw the look of relief on his face, it was a great sight.
Uh, people, I've never seen people in the stand so happy. They were crying and hugging and kissing each other. It was unbelievable. Donnell down. Bernie Harris. Oh, he didn't see Condon in the goal square, but the kick is OK. It's a goal. Oh, what a shot. Long kick by the Essendon key defender down to Harvey. Richardson backs him up. Looks for a hand pass. Out to Clark. Clark's already scored one. Essendon in front by a point. It's going to come back, I think. Elshaw. Out to Duckworth. Not a long kick. Gary Pert has not made a mistake all day. Good goal. He play, on. play on. Hawker. Shot at goal. Is through. Now they're in front by a point. And the Fitzroy side have still got a chance as the ball comes down there now. Harris dodges. He's clear. Goes for the long kick. If they get a goal here, Conlon's got it. He could kick a goal to put him in front. He has. Oh. They're in front. By a point. By a point. And they might have won the game here. Congratulations, Fitzroy. And the Lions are into the first semi-final. We'd had a couple of good wins against us in, in the elimination finals, but that one was against all the odds that day, and we had some great players who just finished off the work for us. But the next week against Sydney, I suppose we are in a similar position. I remember coming, I think, at three-quarter time, we were about 17 points down. It wasn't a terrific day again at the MCG. It was a fairly uh, drizzly-type day. Made it difficult to handle the ball, and everything seemed to go in Sydney's way. Bernie Quinlan having a hurried snap. Back it goes to Hinch and taps the ball to Coleman. And he might have put that through. What a goal! Oh, my goodness! At the back is Danaher. Gets a hurried kick. It comes back to Morwood. Straightens up, ready to fire. It's a shocking kick. This could be a goal from Bob. He's got it. I don't know about that. We'll wait and see. It's a goal. Yes, that's that first. I reckon he's a star player. I'll go along with that one. Can't There's the kick uh, by up there towards Cap. At the back is Morwood. Got a chance now to uh, score a goal here. Certainly deserves one. They're all making, that's what he's done. He's gone for a long kick. Players set themselves. That hits the deck. Grabbed by uh, Healy. Over it goes to Moore. This could be a goal and put the Swans in front. It is. Good play on the part of Healy. That's, knocks it on. Good play. Able to corner. They'll get the lead back here as he runs to an open goal. He won't give it a bow. He fires the goal. He's second. Bunnings kick as usual. Long to half forward. At the back is Morwood. He played on for mine. Onto the right foot and the steps on a goal. Is there? Great goal. Leading out well, Bays. And he is a good footballer, that fellow. Bays puts it short for Roberts. Here's a chance for Kappa. Should go on the right or will he kick it himself? Kappa for goal number two. Is there? It's football at best. Picked up by Neagle. They've got him on that side now. And, uh... And Dwyer Bob, they've moved him over. Murphy's still there now. Yes, Murphy's yeah. got a break now. Murphy goes for the long kick, looking for Kappa. Perth seems to have him covered. Blakey goes in. This is right spinning out of the pack. A hand pass coming back now. Over it goes to Denner from Macazina from Matt Faze. And it's a goal. Goes after the gun. It's only got a bounce right. He could kick a goal because he can kick a football. This might know he couldn't get clear to kick it properly. Coming out as Danaher brushes his way through the pack. A left foot shot. And it's not a bad kick. It's a goal. A ripper. As we see Peek and drive it up towards their half four. A strong mark to Osborne. Osborne quickly plays on to Cotton. He's got a chance to score a goal now. Oh, he's got it through. Shaved it in. Just got it in. Knocked down by Coleman, who's done well since he came on. Peek and overruns the ball. Yeah. It's flipped out to uh, Bolton with a left foot snapshot. That's not bad. I think it's there. Kappa likes it. The goal umpire concurs. One minute into time on in the third term. It's McIver from the circle down to half forward, and that's a lion mark to Conlon. 50 metres out, the tank shoot. That could be the quick reply they needed. It came up within 20 seconds. Holden's kick rebounds. Up to Dwyer at left half forward. Dwyer, Logan, 50 metres out, shoots long, and it will be a goal! Let's have a new after it here. That's Clayton driving over Fitzroy's half forward line. There's a battle between Magazine and Harris. Harris is clear. Straightens up. The kick is not a good one. Down goes Quinlan and Carter. It's going towards the goals. It's kicked through by uh, Osborne. It'll be a goal. So it's only a point the difference. Over the top was Mackenzie. Chance for Fitzroy. That was Bernie Harris. Fitzroy are in front. Quinlan. Goal! Oh, here they come! It's all Fitzroy.
Troy, four goals, kicked in eight minutes in the final quarter. The, the kick is a wild one out there towards the half-back right in front. That time is more to Blake, he's heading well covered, he picks it up well at Browning, too slow. They've got it in, as they go now. As we it's over, Lou, it's over. It's over, Fitz Roy have won it, they're into the preliminary final by five points. So the scores, the final scores, and look at Rendell running out to congratulate his teammates. The final scores, Sydney, 13, 11, 89, going down to Fitzroy, 13, 16, 94. A thrilling five-point win was due largely to Scott Clayton, who tagged 81 Brownlow medalist Greg Williams, and Tim Pekin, who shut down Jared Healy, soon to have a Brownlow of his own. They're big jobs, aren't they? And Scotty was a terrific tagger. He always got a, a tagging job, and, and so did Timmy Peek. And, and they, uh, they really put those two, I suppose, key players, key Sydney players, out of business, which probably set up the win for us. Only Hawthorne stood between Fitzroy and a place in the grand final, alongside Carlton. The Lions had licked the Hawks twice already and were roaring to go. Absolutely, there was no holding us back at that stage. I mean, you, the closer you get, you're thinking that, uh, oh, well, there's a trip to Japan at the end of the year, we're off, we'll, we'll pack the bags now and we'll play the, uh, you play the grand final uh, again over in, in Japan or the, a match over in Japan against the grand finalists. So everyone was uh, pretty optimistic at that stage. Clayton puts it all forward. Turner had the earlier kick on. Lang could miss the mark. He should have taken that one. Barwing a good shepherd for Quinlan. Onto the left foot. Super boot. First goal of the game. How it kicks back. We see Swab trying to smother it. Down goes Osborne. They pounce on top of him. Morris had him covered, but he got him in the back. Well, let's see how good Osborne is with this kick. There it is on its way. Yep. And the umpire doesn't move. It's a goal. So Fitzroy out of Swab, and Swab's in a bit of trouble. Oh, well tackled that time by Big Rendell. And McGrath drives the ball back there. Langford comes in over, runs it. Superboot again. A shot at goal. He's got it. That's his second. Oh, what a ripper. Wallace gets a kick back over the half forward line, grabbed by Thornton, he's grabbed, coming in to meet it now as Curran picks the ball up, he kicked five last week as a snap at goal, this could be handy, and it's a goal, oh that'll be a beaut, Wallace and a beautiful pass out there to DP in a minute ago, crowd not too happy, Platton's got a running chance to score another goal here, from 50 metres out, fires, and that looks good, so the Hawks are really back then, the umpire Roos threw it out now, it's Lovridge's chance to score a goal, a head pass to Platton, you can put down your glass about that one, it's a goal, and the Hawks have hit the front. You meet a line, Osborne, Barwick in front, can't out mark Chris Mew, picked up by McGrath, snapshot is good! Applicable and applied, Dippy Domenico on the edge of the square, play on. Dunstall this time, but Dunstall, 45 metres out, it's a goal. We got a, a bit of a flyer in the first quarter and uh, I suppose everyone was thinking in the stands that hey, this is the day we're going to be playing in the grand final the following week but it didn't sort of follow on from there but uh, we did get a flyer, we played terrific football in that first quarter, sensational. Difficult shot, he runs around, has a snap at goal but it's a shocking kick. Oh, Dunstall nearly grabbed that and so did Curran. Is he going to pay the Dunstall or Curran? The play on. Oh, that was an easy one for Dunstall. And he's got it through for a goal. Dunstall may get there first. Doesn't get a good bounce. Oh. His opponent goes over the top of him, gets it on the green. The green is usually a good long kick. That one's no exception and he might have dubbed it. He had. They all fall over that time. That goes back an hour a clear go as he gets it over to Swab. Another long hand pass to Deer. And Hawthorne looking good now, as we see Morris, he'll go for a hand pass out there to Curran on his own 50 metres out, he'll have a running shot at goal, look at this kick, oh that's a beauty. But we're playing against quality opposition, so any chance, I mean any turnovers that we we uh, we did, they took it up the other end and kicked a goal, they were a terrific side. Now it's Big Deer, a oh, brilliant hand pass from the Hawthorne rookie Ruckman, back to Morris, in turn back to Gary Ayres, what's he doing up there at half forward, it is Ayres, yes. Long shot by Ayres, he's put it through! ...by Hinch and back there to McGrath, got under that one. As they go now, Buck and he's got a score a goal to put them back in business. One to an over one, fires. And the tack is on target. Oh, inside the square. Ah, oh, Quinton at the back of the pack. Jab that beautiful super boot, let's fly, it's another goal. And it's 14 points the difference. Now the free kick to go to Burden. 
He'd be about 50 metres out by the time he kicks this. Oh, there we see Platten up ended. There's a box on now. Oh, there's Turner. Turner fixed him up. And they roll into it. Look at DP and a minute ago. Went through like a tank that time. That Bernie Harris. Oh, Platten left Platten's left having right. a go too. And also uh, Osmond's there amongst the players. Well, this has certainly lightened things up in this preliminary final for 1986, the third quarter. And the finest man on the ground, Dermot Brewer. Bacchanar in front, no one down. Brewer and the covers the quick, or the, the better. On to Dippy Domenico, looks for a long hand pass to Bacchanar. 45 metres out and shoots off target. Is it, or is it coming around? It might have sneaked in for a goal. Reeves comes out with a well tackled by Dunstall. Opens it up for Platten. If he can pick it up, he can't. Dunstall might have got it at the back of his opponent. Platten's kick has gone through the goal. 14 points is nothing, but... Uh... You know, to get within 14 points and then let it slip away as we did was disappointing. But as I say, we were up against quality opposition and a lot of our players were really playing uh, probably at the end of their tether. They'd had a lot of injuries and Matty Rendell, who'd missed the week before, or, or the one against Sessendon, had really been struggling with a thigh injury and he was up against a very mobile bloke in, in Greg Deer, who played a fantastic game that day. He was just about best on the ground in the ruck. Tries to get it to Wallace. Finally, Wallace gets boot to ball. And Dunstall leading a full four. Dunstall, 35 metres out. Has missed, has he, or is it a goal? Short pass. Out to Pert. And by golly, doesn't he look tired? It was good play as he knocked it onto Barwick now. Short pass. And the ball marked here by Render. That's how badly they're going. Third, Third is it? Third. Well, there they go. There's the kick. We'll wait on the result. Back to centre field. It hits the deck. Backing up well as Swab. Gives a hand pass over to Green. Green at 50 metres out, still running at the goals. He's got a chance to score one here now. He lets fly. And that is a goal. Out to Loveridge, still inside the square. He's running goalwards. Oh, no, Russell Green a few moments ago. His kick dropped short, though. Platten swoops on it. Gets clear of Reeves. Shoots at goal and puts it through. That Hawthorne went on to take the flag by seven goals made Fitzroy's final fling look even better. Oh, fantastic year. Fantastic year. To get to the preliminary, preliminary final, uh, oh, well, I played from 1969 until 1986, and that was the only preliminary final I played in. That was the furthest we'd got in, uh, in my 17 season of playing football. So if uh, I suppose we'd been told at the start of the year, well, you're going to be guaranteed to be playing the preliminary final, you'd be pretty happy with that. Ten years after the Lions last graced the field in a final, many of the players were back on the main stage along with a host of other former greats, as Fitzroy said goodbye to Melbourne. A founding member of the Victorian Football League, it was poignant that the club's last rights came on a trip to Perth as part of a national competition. September 1, 1996. It's a day the Fitzroy faithful will remember long after the club is forgotten. But as Fitzroy became the Brisbane Lions, the irony of what might have been back in season 86 was haunting. Yeah, we had a vote one Sunday morning after training and it was put to the players uh, as to which way we'd go and I'd say 99% of the players were very happy to, uh, to go to Brisbane. We'd trained over at Wesley College and we had a meeting there on the tennis court and all the players, it was put to a vote as to whether, uh, I think Melbourne was even mentioned as a merger partner in those days and it was put to, uh, put to us whether a Melbourne merger would have been preferable to uh, the team going as a separate entity to Brisbane. 
and of course suppliers wanted to stay together rather than be uh, you know some going one way and some going the other way so it was pre preferred amongst suppliers that we would stay as a separate entity and transfer to Brisbane.